Hi, welcome back to part two. Dean Windass, I'm delighted to say, is uh, still with us. Fascinating part one with recollections of Sheffield United. This uh, half of the show will move on to Sheffield Wednesday. And of course, uh, his son, Max, uh, his son, not Max, um, his son, Josh, has been on loan at uh, Sheffield Wednesday. Max is our other guest uh, this half. That's Max Ristano, a uh, musician from uh, Sheffield. Does great work. Uh, recommend you listen to some of it. And in particular... Great work for the NHS at the moment because um, courtesy of a, the brainchild of uh, his friend Mike Firth, also a mutual friend actually, a journalist I've known for many years, had the idea that, you know, the uh, greasy chip butty Sheffield United anthem uh, based on Annie's song was lacking a couple of verses. He mentioned this to Max and Max has recorded a brilliant new version of it and every download of that uh, we'll get a click for the NHS and raise funds for the NHS. Before we join uh, Max, talk about that. Hi, Max. Uh, Dean, um, the NHS uh, are just our heroes at, at the minute. People talk about people being highly paid to do a hobby as being their heroes. But my goodness, these people, the frontliners. You don't realise, how, how, obviously, with this coronavirus, you don't realise how many people you take for granted. You know, the one thing about it is everybody's, you know, that you know, it's pr you, you're proud to be British, really, you know, because at the end of the day, everybody's mucking in together now. And you wouldn't have got that. You wouldn't have got that, would you, before all this? No. You know, people just take people for granted, you know, and uh, we're all critical of it. You know, we're all being critical of it. And, and they've come to the to the front now. And you know, I always say it anyway, you know, when you get called a legend in football, be like, people, let's look at Tom Moore this, this morning, you know, 100-year-old, you know, and, you know, he, the things he's gone through in his life, I did that with my video this morning, you know, you know, respect people like that, respect the NHS, respect the bin men, you know, who we'll, come in to collect our rubbish every Friday morning, you know, probably, you know, they'll get half the wages is what people get. So, you know, not just the NHS, but everybody who's been working right through this, you know, massive respect. Mm. We'll finish in time for the clap for carers on this show. And that's at eight o'clock this evening. We'll all be uh, out there, no doubt. Um, Max, uh, Mike came to you with, it, with, with this idea, um, the Blades uh, anthem, and you, you've, you've adapted it so that it's not just about football. Yeah, well, he, uh, well, yeah, Mike came up to me with the idea of uh, doing the chant. Well, firstly, he said to me, do you know the chant? I said, uh, yeah, I do, actually, because it's a well-known uh, Sheffield chant, and uh, every time I go to the pub or watch a, a United game, it's, uh, everyone sings it. Uh, and yeah, he, he just he came up with this idea of wouldn't it be great if this this small chant that was uh, that, that United fans do was turned into a full song with full production and a full band. And so basically, the challenge was to write um, a, a couple of verses about uh, Sheffield and about uh, it's not just about Sheffield United, but it's also about Sheffield and a celebra celebration of Sheffield. And uh, once it was finished, we both sort of. Uh, instantly came to the conclusion that this has to be a charity song what a great time to do a charity um and it's yeah I just find it's really poignant time to do it and i just, just said absolutely it sounds like a great idea to me <laughs> mm, great stuff uh, dean are, are you a fan of the song or the, uh, the, the 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 actual item in your hand no i love the song when i was uh, when i played for sheffield i'd sing it before it, before we kicked off so i love my own little little uh, sing song before we start but no I, I'd never heard of it before I'd never obviously before I signed for Sheffield United obviously you don't you know unless you you play at, um, at Bramall Lane and then obviously it comes on you think well if you're not playing for Sheffield United then you don't understand it but everybody's got their own theme haven't they and, uh, but no I enjoyed it I enjoyed the song to be quite honest with you yeah, it's, it's great and it'll be playing in the background at some stage of this uh, part two um Max, it's taken off. I know that Sheffield United have got behind behind it and they've thrown the weight of their social media behind it. So how are you doing in terms of downloads so far? Do you know what? I'm not actually sure how, how many downloads we've had, but I've heard that it's doing really well. And like you said, Sheffield United have uh, responded really well to it and they've got it on their website. And uh, yeah, it's just been a great reaction from people. And uh, it's particularly fans of, uh, you know, even just being a Sheffielder. I've had Sheffielders say, oh, I'm not necessarily a United supporter, but it's uh, it's just great to hear a song that uh, represents Sheffield. And, yeah, I uh, think this situation brings everybody together. It doesn't really matter which, t which team you support, but it's high time that we moved on to Sheffield Wednesday because... Uh, Sheffield went, uh, United have had plenty of coverage in this in this show 
uh, today. So let, let's go to Dean because you had two spells with Sheffield clubs, didn't you? Sheffield United was 2002-2003, but before that, 2001-02, and 02, uh, you had a smattering of appearances for Sheffield Wednesday. You scored three goals, actually, I think, for both, for both clubs. What are your, your Hillsborough memories, Dean, of that time? Well, the, the, the Sheffield, Sheffield Wednesday one, uh, I didn't score for Sheffield Wednesday. Did you um, not? I've got no, I no, have a no. look up on Wikipedia. Maybe it's wrong. I thought you. No, had... it's wrong. It's wrong. Trust me, it's wrong. <laughs> um, no, the old the, the Sheffield Wednesday uh, move came around. And obviously, uh, Terry Vendor was left Middlesbrough when he signed me for Middlesbrough. And Steve McLaren came in, and um, I uh, I injured my back pre-season. I had a real back uh, bad back injury. I was doing extra extra weights before I went went back pre-season in, in my garage. And, and my, my SI joint came out, so I didn't I didn't do a full pre-season. I couldn't. I lost all the feeling down the the, the left side of my my uh, body. I had to have an epidural to 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 take the in, in, you know the inflammation away. Uh, and then I got myself back fit, and obviously I wasn't playing for Middlesbrough. And I went into to McLaren and said, "Look, I, I need to be playing. I'm back fit again." And uh, Terry Oroth was the manager of Sheffield Wednesday. And he was uh, my assistant manager at Bradford with Paul Jewell. He ran me up and he says, look, obviously the club are looking at you to loan you out for a month to get yourself back fit. Do you want to come to Sheffield Wednesday? And I thought, massive club. You know, yeah, great fan base. And I, and I, and I said, yeah. And I said, yeah. And, but what I was doing while I was training for Middlesbrough, I was getting injections in my back from the physio of, of Middlesbrough. Uh, and then when I went to Sheffield Wednesday, I said to the physio at Sheffield Wednesday, they, they give them all the medical records and said, Dean actually needs injections before games to, 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 you know, to, to get him through 90 minutes, basically. And the physio refused to, to inject me uh, for some reason. So I played the first game at home. I can't remember what it was against. Me and Neff and the Kuku played up front. And then the second game was against Gillingham away. Now, when you go to Gillingham, it's a long coach ride to Gillingham. And I remember playing in the game and whatever and coming back on the coach and we were playing cards on the coach on the way home. I think we drew, drew in both games, I think it was. And, and uh, as I'm going to get off the coach at Hillsborough to get in my car, I couldn't, I couldn't move. I couldn't physically move. You know, my back had seized up. I said to Terry Orff, I, I couldn't get out of my seat. And uh, eventually I got in the car um, and I got on there and then next morning I ran the physio up and I said, at Middlesbrough, I said, I'm, my back's, he said, well, come in for treatment. I went, I went in the next day for treatment. I told Terry I was going back to, to, to see Bob Ward at, at uh, Middlesbrough. And we cut the, we cut it short because I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't play the, the month out. Right. I had to recover again. You know, I had to do my exercises at Middlesbrough. The club, Middlesbrough rang Taff up and said, look, you know, Dino, he's not going to be, he's not going to be able to, Fulfilled a month. No, it's just and not that's, that that's, that's how that came short. So I was disappointed that way because obviously it looked as though I, you know, I, I I had a really bad spell there, which I did in the sense of injuries. But obviously I didn't have the the chance to prove to the Sheffield Wednesday fans, you know, what a good player I was. Not the happiest of times, but of course the link uh, continues to this day. Um, Josh has had a loan spell with Sheffield Wednesday, truncated like everybody's has been by by this situation with coronavirus and he was you know just coming into his own and beginning to make an impact when the break came so how did you observe that spell and presumably he he he, he got his dad's advice on whether to take that move on loan from Wigan as well did he yeah listen he was going through a tough time at Wigan he should never have left Glasgow Rangers in my opinion but he's a man you know and I just advise him as a as a as a dad not as a footballer you know, and he's a grown man, and I said, "You do whatever you feels good for your career." You know, he left Glasgow Rangers to go to Wigan for I think two and a half million pound. I think it was. Um, started reasonably well for Wigan, and obviously, you know, I, you know, things happen in football like it did with Warnock, and then subsequently, you know, the the club agreed, you know, just to go out on loan, um, and. Sheffield Wednesday come calling. I said yes straight away. I said, you know, what a massive club, you know, great, great fan base. Um, Sheffield Wednesday actually going through a bad time at that at that stage, really, weren't they? Where they couldn't, you know, bring in players. I know Gary Monk really well. I knew that he was a fan of of Josh's, and he said, "What do you think, Dad?" I said, "Yeah, you know, what a great move." 
Um, and I went, I went, I went to a couple of games. Um, you know, when he scored, when he scored on his on his on his debut away from home, and things were going well. He was up front with, with Connor Wickham, um, and then this this coronavirus came, and then obviously it's come crashing down. So yeah. um, I don't know what's going to happen with Josh. He's got another year left uh, at Wigan at the end of the at the end of the season when it when it finally does finish. Um, so I don't know if he's going to stay, and I'm, I, I'm I'm sure that the, the two clubs and Josh will, will sort that out. But I can't obviously speculate on that because I don't know. And Josh Josh doesn't know. So I think that he'll want to finish. Obviously, you know what he started at, at you know at Sheffield Wednesday till the end of the season, and then to, and then see what happens next year. Yeah, you say you know Gary Monk really well. I mean, it occurs to me that you and he might have been at Sheffield Wednesday around about the same time. Uh, were you? And if if not, where do you know Gary from particularly? No, I knew, no, I, uh, I wasn't there. When, but Gary was obviously playing for Swansea. Yeah. And I was when I played. I played against Gary loads of times. Uh, uh, we had a few run-ins on the pitch, you know. And uh, but no, he, as you say, when he was manager of Leeds and, and it, or you know whatever club he managed, he came to to Hull City and I'd have a chat with him, him and James Beatty, because obviously James Beatty signed out Josh for for Accrington, you see. So that was the connection there. So obviously yeah. James obviously give Gary a, a feedback of our Josh, and then and obviously that's how it came around. But you know me and Gary obviously then as ex footballers you you know you chat and you talk and you know I had respect for him he had respect for me and and uh, yeah subsequently he went and he went and, and signed Josh which which was great for for Josh signing for a massive club and uh, you know I don't know what's going to happen at the end of the season if Josh goes back to Wigan. Or Sheffield Wednesday make it permanently. I don't know. Nobody knows what's going to happen. Who used to come out the better of those duels that you used to have? Gary being a centre half and you being a, a striker. Well, Swansea was a very good side at that time. You know, they would, they would play the diamond formation. They passed the ball for fun. So I try to rough, rough him up a little bit. Um, there was him and um, uh, Williams centre half who played for Wales. Ashley yeah. Williams. So there was him and uh, him and Ash. So I always used, to, always used to pull on to, to Monkey because he was more like a, an Alan Hansen type of centre-half, a footballing yeah. centre-half. Yeah. See, with Ashley Williams, he'd want to fight you. So I think, <laughs> well, I don't want to fight him because he's a bit big, so I'll try fighting Gary. <laughs> um, but no, massive respect, you know, he was a good player. He was a good player. Yeah. Was Monkey, he's having a know. testing time. He's had a testing time as manager of Sheffield Wednesday. What are your observations of that from outside I know for a fact he hasn't really had an opportunity to change the squad very much so far. no I think I think that'll be his, I think that listen as you say I, I'm, I'm not aware of you know what you know if, if there's any contracts up or this that another or how many how many uh, players he's got available you know to bring in next year I'm sure that he'll want to bring his own men in next year you know I'm sure that he'll want to get rid of players which that's just nature of football you know if he wants to sign out Josh on a permanent then he has to sort out the deal with Wigan you know, the same with Conor Wickham at Crystal Palace. You know, would you want him bring him in, in, in full time? So I'm sure next year, when when the season finishes, and uh, Gary will be glad, you know, to get his own own stamp, bring his own players in. You know, because as you say, they're a massive football club. You know, when I went when I, when I went to the away game, and that you know, I was sat. You know, listen, I don't like to sit in directors' boxes and this that and other when I'm watching Josh. I want to sit with the supporters. You know, I want to have a burger and a bovril. You know, and and be normal. So once you know when I went to watch uh, when I went to watch Josh away from home, I was sat with all stood with all the Sheffield Wednesday fans, and it was a great great day, great day. You know, it was a great day, especially uh, it was at Barnsley. It was a great day, and especially when he scored as well, and all the supporters jumping on me head because how Josh had scored. You know, so I'm a proud dad. I'm not a footballer now. Now I'm a, I'm a dad. You know, and yeah. so listen, if he if if he stays there, brilliant. If he if he goes back to Wigan. And I'll support him wherever, wherever he gets, wherever okay. he is. Yeah. And do you think, just finally, before we go uh, back to, to to Max, there, do you think Gary Monk, long term, is is the right man for Sheffield Wednesday? Inevitably, yeah. these days, when managers go through a bad spell, they're always criticised. But do, do you think, in your gut, that he's he's the right guy? Yeah. Well, I'm I'm, I'm sure that he, he believes in his own, you know, his own, own ability. I think that as a, again. You know, not just because of what's going on at Sheffield Wednesday, not just the, the playing staff who probably want to bring his own staff in as well. You know, yeah. because managers, you know, they, they like to bring people in who they can trust. I actually don't know the, the, the implications of Sheffield Wednesday's finances at the time, I think where they couldn't bring players in or they had a, 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 
an embargo or whatever it was. So I'm sure that he'll want to mix it all up. He'll want to he'll want to do it the way he wants to do it. <coughs> and yeah, and, and listen, you know, he's he's, you know, he's very, you know, he's, he's very ambitious. I know that, and I know that uh, like every manager wants to, you know, want to want to manage in the Premier League, and, and I'm sure Gary wants to do that. Yeah. Okay, Dean. We'll come back to you in a minute. Maybe with your thoughts on what's right for football going forward. Should we complete the season, etc., etc. Uh, but I'll I'll come to you after Max. Um, it's clearly a, a proud time for you and your family. I mean, cards on the table now. Are you a, a blade or an owl? Uh, well, uh, I've always been a, a United. My, 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 my family team is United, but uh, I do usually like to stay quite neutral <laughs> in football. Yeah. But like I say, United is my uh, sort of family team, so I do support United. <laughs> I suppose that's the right answer, isn't it, in the, in, in, in the circumstances? And, and the, the song, I mean, not being a musical expert, even though I want to one time, is spin the old vinyl on, on, on local radio. But I've listened to the song, and I think it's absolutely fantastic. How would you describe it musically? I've, I've heard it described as bluesy, jazzy, that, that, that kind of thing. You, you, you give me the expert's view on, on what it is. Well, actually, my, my uh, well, I was working on, an, well, I'm still working on my own album uh, at, the, at the moment, and um, I'm actually going for a jazz thing on my album, so I think that did actually rub off on, onto the <laughs> Greasy Chip Putty song. But when you actually listen to the original song by John Denver, the uh, Annie mm. song, it's really beautiful, so I think it is a little bit jazzy, actually, yeah, I would describe it as jazzy, so yeah, yeah probably. <laughs> It is a beautiful song, uh, but you, you, you include references that, that, that Sheffielders will equate to. For instance, reference to the hole in the road, long, long deceased. But local landmarks feature prominently in it. Yeah, there's not only the landmarks, there's uh, all sorts of colloquialism. It's really funny, like <coughs> humorous uh, Sheffield uh, words. And I think that was really cool to get that in. And also, I used a, 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 my strong Sheffield accent as well at some point. Just because it's you can't say them sort of colloquial words <laughs> in a sort of normal singing voice, it sounds a bit strange. So, uh, so yeah, it's interesting to, to do that because I don't usually get to do that when I'm writing songs for myself or for other people or whatever. So, yeah, it was really cool. Really cool to get no, that great. In. I'd urge uh, supporters to, 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 to go out and buy it. In, not not so much buy it, you don't have to buy it, you have to download it. Uh, that, that's the way that you can raise money for the uh, NHS. And, and talking about the need for backing. Dean, I don't know if you've got a view of this because you, you've been in touch with football at all levels of, of, of the game. And at the moment, there's an absolute crisis, particularly for non-league clubs. I'm thinking locally, Stocksbridge Park Steels, who developed the career of Amy Vardy, for instance, at one time. They've lost uh, three key sponsors. Uh, they also had a break-in and some vandalism of all things at, the, at this time. It's absolutely sickening. They and many others are facing facing a fight for survival can can and should the, the game at a higher level come in and help do you think yeah listen i think that i you know, i watch sky and i, I watched the debate with, with uh jamie carragher and gary neville and you know roy Keane was on the other day you know t talking about you know players should you know forfeit the wages to you know to 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 the low league clubs and this that and other and i agree with roy is that it's you know each individual you know you know, I I do a lot for cancer research charities and this that and other. So everybody, every footballer probably, which is not aware that people might give money out their own wages to you know whoever charities that they they support. Um, but I think obviously from the Premier League down to down to League One, League Two, you know, if if these these teams are struggling financially, then you know just give them a better backing, give them a better help. You know, I, I actually don't I, I don't understand why non-league football is not going to Finish till the end of the season. You know, I don't know why they've scrapped it. I don't know why. You know, the, the, because at the end of the day, they're not getting the biggest crowds in the world. I know that you've got to be social distancing and this that, and other, but they're not getting. You know, my my local team, North Ferriby, you know, who, who play in the North Eastern Counties League. You now they get two hundred supporters, and the season finished. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. Now with the Premier League, now they're talking about obviously playing behind closed doors. Listen, I think my opinion is next football. I think that the season needs to be finished. How they do it, I don't know. Do you know how they play behind closed doors or this? Side? It's going to be strange for footballers. It's just like it's like just having a a, a a practice match on the training ground. But obviously, it's going to count in a sense of points. You know, and it's going to mean mean a lot. Obviously, Liverpool. You know, 
yes, they're going to win the Premier League, but you can't just say, yeah, you, you get because it won't be the same for the players, will it? It won't be the same for yeah. the players. That you no, know, yeah, they've achieved so much up to now, but then you look at the relegation as well. You know, you look at the lad, the teams who were say third from bottom, trying to fight, fight, you know, get out of the uh, out the bottom three, and then all of a sudden, then well, if you're going to give Liverpool the title now, then you've got to relegate the bottom three then. Now then, it yeah. doesn't work. It doesn't work. So for me, how they do it, I do not know. Do but you, know you feel they've got to play and finish the season when it's safe, basically. But when it's safe, listen. The, the the beauty of it, everything is, is that the players and whoever. You know, don't get listen. How many how many staff do you think people have on the books now? Oh, you, know, you don't just you just don't have a manager, a, a assistant manager, and a physio here and a, and, a, and a fitness coach. You've got you know sports science, got analysing coach, everything. So every every club probably have twenty staff on. You know, on, you know when you see people around the dugout, you're thinking, what does he do? What does he do? What does he? Everybody who's got a track store on, you know, they're working for the football club. So They've got too many, haven't they? There are too many players in squads, full stop, aren't there? Yeah, listen. At the end, listen, at the end of the day, in, in my day, yeah, you get 16. All right, later on in my career, you're getting 25. But like you were getting, what, 15 or three subs then, weren't they? And this, that, and other. And, mm. You know, listen, it, life, life's changed, hasn't it? And football's changed. But in my opinion, it, it, you've, got to, you've got to finish the season how you do it and how safely they do it. I, I, I heard a rumour yesterday that obviously it's going to resume in June. You know, behind closed doors, either at St George's or wherever they're going to play play the games. It's got to be signed off by the government. So we'll, we'll wait and see. But I'm sure that the, the the season, you know, players now are starting to go back training, aren't they, individually or in little sections of groups? I don't know. I spoke to Josh uh, the last couple of days, so I don't know when Sheffield Wednesday are allowed to go back. But I know that Josh is training every day on his own. He's running. They've got a schedule to do every day, um, and and the players are st- you know standing by that schedule. You know, the managers, yeah. the, listen, the managers and the, and the fitness coaches and the sports science people, they've got to trust the, the players, haven't they? And the players have got to, you know, look after themselves for when it does come back, i.e. if it is behind closed doors or if it is normal. Yeah. It's also an opportunity for the game to come to its senses, isn't it? In, in so many respects. Yeah, of course. Listen, everybody's got to respect what's going on. Everybody's got to respect oh. it. You know, we're all... You no, know, we're all singing from the same room sheet. Everybody's doing the, the same things, so you just got to respect. I.e., if they do, how they're gonna how they're gonna do it? You know how they're gonna close everything down and say, right, yeah, Liverpool, you've won the league. But how do you deal with the the, the other side? You know how do you deal with it? And there's that many companies gonna go out of business. You know, like you just said there. You know, Staley Bridge. And, but listen, why are people going around vandalizing things? You know, I don't I don't get it. I just don't. It don't. It don't I yeah. just don't get it. I've probably been brought up the right way, but do you know, like I did my videos this morning. Just respect things, respect people. Do you know what I mean? And but listen, that's what we get now, don't we? That's that's the world we're living in at the minute. Mm. Yeah, Stocksbridge. We were we were t- talking sorry, about Stocksbridge, there. Sorry. And and isn't it isn't it vital for the for the game as a whole to to invest in the, in in that level of football because of the Jamie Vardys who come through and the supply line. It's not just about the top, is it? Got to protect no, you get to, the, the grassroots. No, listen. I came from North Ferriby. I came as an only player, and I got released as, a, as an apprentice. Um, and 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 as you said, Jeremy Vardy is that you know, Brendan Rodgers said probably one of the best strikers in the country. Mm. You know, and, and if somebody wanted to took a chance on me, or somebody wanted to took a chance on Jeremy Vardy, you know, then so these are these you know the grassroots football. Now I walk around Hull and. And we had the biggest Sunday league in the country. Oh. No, it was in, we played it from the Premier League down to, you know, Division 16 or 18 or 36 or whatever it was. It was the biggest. Yeah. Now we we'll walk around on a Sunday morning, you don't see any games anymore. No. So the grassroots football has gone because nobody's invested in it, you know. And, and that's where you started from. That's where, you know, probably, well, everybody, every football who's played in the Premier League have played for the Sunday league teams or played for the yeah. school teams. So why is it all, all of a sudden changed now? Because of academies. You know, academies. Yeah. Now, I don't, I believe in academies. My two boys went to, Jordan went, my youngest lad went to Huddersfield. Josh went to Huddersfield Academy. But there was no academies when I played. You know, I, I trained on a Tuesday and Thursday with Old City. Played on a Saturday from a school team and played, and played Sunday League football. Mm. Do you, 
it, it, Dean, it's been absolutely fantastic to share time with you on, on the show. Really welcome your views. Always honest, straight to the point, and, and, and with the, the good of uh, not only football, but society and all of us at heart. And Max as well, uh, full marks to you for, for, for that fantastic effort on behalf of the NHS. You didn't know I was going to ask you this, but I'm just wondering whether you could sing us out with a verse of <laughs> you fill up. <laughs> you, I've really put him on the spot now. Are you you asking me you could manage the, uh, the, the chorus for us just to sing us out there, Max. <laughs> I'm glad you've asked Max. <laughs> you fill up my senses like a gallon of magnum. Like a packet of wood bites, like a good pinch of snow, like a night out in Sheffield, like a greasy chick butty, like Sheffield United, come through me again. <laughs> Max Restaino, uh, and our friend Dean Windass. Thank you so much. That's been brilliant entertainment. Thank you for watching, and we'll try and cobble together somehow or other another show next week. Hope to see you then. Bye bye.